the Holy Ghost is not Jesus Jesus is not the Holy Ghost Jesus never turned into the Holy Ghost Jesus the real Jesus left you and sent another if he left you he's not with you he sent another who's the another the Holy Ghost and he's with you to this day he's God in the earth get it straight the father is in heaven Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost your God the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words my name is Andrew Hemstrad I thank you for joining us if this is your first time here make sure you subscribe and if this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you then consider becoming a partner with us well, second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and that means inspiration you can look it up it means God breathed so God breathed out the scriptures say God, God. breathed out the scriptures you have a problem with that so far I'm gonna build the case here you understand all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 who breathed out the scriptures God did no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by who holy. the Holy Ghost did we just read that yeah. who were they moved by the Holy, the holy Ghost God breathed out who was the one breathing it out the Holy, the holy Ghost who spoke the scriptures the holy, ghost. holy ghost all scriptures given by inspiration of God the Holy Ghost and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect now if your doctrine is wrong specifically about the Holy Ghost that's why I'm stressing it if your doc if your doctrine is wrong about the Holy Ghost is it even possible that you could reach perfection no. no that the man of God may be perfect or get to perfection you can't get there mm -hmm. if your doctrine is wrong about the Holy Ghost then no perfection for you some say well we don't worship the Holy Ghost in our church we don't do that we don't worship the Holy Ghost or you shouldn't worship the Holy Ghost have you heard this before yes. I've heard it personally many times believe me it's super prevalent in the church you could probably go to just about any say just about any, just about any. and if they catch you saying the words I worship you Holy Ghost they might say something about you mm -hmm. or certainly lift an eyebrow we don't do that here well would it be okay for me to worship the living God yes. wouldn't wouldn't that be acceptable wouldn't it be acceptable for me to say I worship you living God you're the living God and I worship you mm -hmm. would that be okay yes. all right well let's look at 2nd Corinthians stay with me we're going somewhere today a lot of people need to hear this 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16 what agreement has the temple of God with idols for you are the temple of the living God so whatever God you're the temple of the scriptures call the living God mm -hmm. is this true yes. say I am, I am the, temple the temple of, of the, living the living God right and you already said that it's okay to worship the living God yes. I know you know where I'm going but I need to walk people through this who, sp who spoke the scriptures Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. who's talking about himself here Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost right so uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know you not 
that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost what did the other verse say your body is the temple of the living, the living God. God your body is the temple you are the temple of the Living God you are the temple of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. am I making this clear enough mm -hmm. who is the Living God the Holy Ghost is the Living God it's one of his names say this the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. is the Living God it's one of his names should we have that straight yes. mm -hmm. what if my doctrine won't go here or disallows that I can't be perfected in whatever that will do to me and for me mm -hmm. but if I can get that straight and my doctrine is straight that the Holy Ghost is the Living God and that he's in the earth today mm -hmm. yes. and I'm allowed to worship him as the Living God then my doctrine is straight scripturally and it will take me somewhere somewhere where the other people can't go and I'm talking about it today I go places other people can't go every day I go there and I enjoy it is this good yes Ooh. so I've got uh, I've got some notes down here it says the Holy Ghost is the Living God are you okay with that yes. mm -hmm. you already said you're okay with me worshiping the Living God so you must be okay with me worshiping the Holy Ghost who is the Living God Amen. are you here yeah. I'm going to blast you with this with this doctrine I'm gonna blast you with it say he's gonna blast me with it, blast me with it. over and over the word has like a hammering effect chips away things blast you like if you're gonna put dynamite you know in a big rocky cliff you gotta blow it up a lot of junk that needs to be blown up and blown off of people mm -hmm. over and over. so you get it on the inside right. unshakable my object here is to get you to the other side of this mm -hmm. you understand so that worshiping the Living God the Holy Ghost is not a problem for you so I gotta blast all of those old doctrines out are there any there that need to be blasted out well obviously we make a mistake in dumbing everything down we need to expose people to more that's how you learn mm -hmm. you don't learn something you already know you learn something you're exposed to that's more there's more to the Holy Ghost than people have been exposed to mm -hmm. there's more to the Holy Ghost than people have been exposed to there is more to the Holy Ghost than people have been exposed to it's how you grow mm -hmm. but you don't understand everything right away I know I've learned a whole bunch of different things sometimes you just got to dive into it say dive into it, dive into it and start learning things and you learn this you learn about here learn, and then all of a sudden say all of a sudden all of a sudden, all of a sudden it makes sense mm -hmm. right but it will never all of a sudden make sense if you're not being exposed to something that's beyond you at the point where you are exactly. so we're building a framework for higher knowledge higher learning that you can enter into if you don't have the framework there or your doctrines framework won't let you even go there mm -hmm. you put the framework there and then and then you can understand and everything start to fit together and you get it mm -hmm. if you don't have a framework then you have no place to put it if you have a framework at some point listen at some point you're gonna say I get it it'll dawn on you you'll get it if you don't have the framework there you're just gonna go I'm confused I have nowhere to put what you're saying Does this make sense and it's because they've not been exposed to the Holy Ghost in the capacity that I'm talking about okay all right so I'm not gonna baby you no baby no baby no baby no baby no baby say no baby no baby. no baby no baby does no good to baby because that baby never learns how to grow out of being a baby we have most of the church is just a bunch of milk sucking babies we're in first Corinthians. go back to second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn unto the Lord or turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away say the veil, the veil. Shall, be taken shall be taken away, away. 
now if a veil is taken away you're gonna see something that you didn't see before yes. mm -hmm. right yes. verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away mm -hmm. now the Lord is veils taken away and you see that spirit you see who the Lord is say who the Lord is, who the Lord is. now in this day and age we're in the day and age of the Holy Ghost you understand I'm not babying you well I've never heard this before you're being exposed to something that you need to be exposed to so that when we start to go to other places you'll have context to put it in you understand now the Lord is that spirit where the Spirit of the Lord is or where the Spirit is Lord or where the Spirit Lord is say the Spirit Lord where the Spirit Lord is there is Liberty now if you don't come to that revelation with a veil taken away and the Lord is the Spirit or the Spirit is Lord you can't have that Liberty that he's talking about here you understand so there's a Liberty there that people aren't walking in right, right. now the Lord is that Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there's Liberty but we all with open face beholding as in a mirror or a glass the glory of the Lord that same Lord that we're talking about mm -hmm. are changed into the same image from glory mm -hmm. to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord other translations say even as by the Lord who is that spirit by the Lord who is that spirit say the Lord, the Lord who is, who is that, spirit. that spirit so my question to you be careful here especially you out there my question to you is when did Jesus become that spirit when did Jesus turn into the Holy Ghost what what point in time did Jesus magically according to your doctrine and the way you believe and have been doing things turn into the Holy Ghost now the Lord is that spirit where the spirit is Lord there's Liberty a Liberty that we can't have unless we understand the spirit in this way let's just look at this for a second I know you people here don't have a problem with it but let's go to Luke chapter 4 we should have like a counter on the screen of how many churches I would get kicked out of <laughs> each time I say something the counter you know adds a certain number of churches mm -hmm. Luke chapter 4 and Jesus being full of himself returned from the Jordan and was led by himself into the wilderness wait what <laughs> and Jesus being oh full of the Holy Ghost this is right after his baptism by John and the Holy Ghost came on him mm -hmm. you understand yeah. Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost say Jesus, Jesus. you know about Jesus right yeah. he Jesus the person of Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit same Spirit that'd be the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. into the wilderness so who was leading Jesus and who was Jesus following the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. so was Jesus by himself in the wilderness no, no. he wasn't led by himself to the wilderness he wasn't full of himself when he went into the wilderness he was with the Holy Ghost say Jesus, Jesus. Was, with Ghost. was with the Holy Ghost I could go on and on until you're blue in the face Jesus was not by himself when he went into the world Jesus is not the Holy Ghost he never turned into the Holy Ghost Do you understand in fact he went sat down at the Father's right hand and sent another yes. it didn't say I'm gonna send myself in the form of the Holy Ghost And, and everybody's doctrine says this you understand but the way they interpret it and walk about their lives mm -hmm. belies even their own doctrine mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost is not Jesus 
jesus is not the holy ghost jesus never turned into the holy ghost jesus the real jesus left you and sent another if he left you he's not with you he sent another who's the another the holy ghost and he's with you to this day he's god in the earth get it straight mm -hmm. so when did jesus become the holy ghost or turn into the holy ghost that's goofiness and stop it mm -hmm. he never did jesus never turned into the holy ghost <sighs> he sent another to be with you and then he said you're the temple and who's you who are you the temple of the Holy Ghost who is the Living God are we getting this mm -hmm. so when I say now the Lord is that spirit we're talking about the Spirit of the Lord in the earth he's the only part of the Godhead in the earth today say the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is the only, the only part, part of the Godhead, Godhead. In the earth today he's not Jesus and it's his dispensation so if now the Lord is that spirit behind the veil we go behind the veil and we start to see this mm -hmm. part of my preaching listen part of what my preaching is doing is removing removing that veil so that you can see who is the Lord in our day mm -hmm. and get to know him and have the Liberty that he brings to you that can't be brought with any other revelation we enter behind that veil say that veil, that veil. is that veil still on many people yes. oh so many especially when people say oh we don't worship the Holy Ghost I'll show you that in a minute what don't they know about the Holy Ghost if they don't worship him that he's God yeah. they're thinking something else you enter behind that veil and we see the Holy Ghost remember as in a mirror say as in a mirror, in a mirror. we're looking at the Holy Ghost say I'm looking at the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. as in a mirror guess who's looking back Jesus. he is you see him as he is mm -hmm. and you get to know him and there's glory in there and we're supposed to glory in this we go from glory to glory by that yes. everyone wants to go from glory to glory but they don't want to go that way mm -hmm. this is the way walk ye in it mm -hmm. glory be to God forever <sighs> now the Lord is that spirit where the spirit is Lord there's Liberty we all with open face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord who is that spirit does the Holy Ghost have any glory mm -hmm. he's the living God we see him looking out at us Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 24 but let him that glories glory in this say this, this. glory in this that he understands and knows me so there's there's two things there right understanding that the Holy Ghost is Lord and knowing the Holy Ghost are you getting this yes. let him glory in is there glory in it I'm telling you there's glory in it understanding and knowing him the Holy Ghost let him glory in this that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord which exercise loving kind exercise means he does things which exercise loving kindness judgment and righteousness mm -hmm. where in the earth he exercises these things in the earth who's in the earth the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost I am the Lord I do this glory and understanding and knowing me mm -hmm. in the earth mm -hmm. are you getting this yes. for in these things do I delight saith the Lord mm -hmm. when Jeremiah wrote that he was moved by the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and he said let him that glories glory in this let him understand and know me 
me who me the Holy Ghost in the earth are you here mm -hmm. all right these things should be opening up to you and as I preach the veil should be coming and be being taken away so that you can understand and know him the Holy Ghost who is God in the earth today he's the living God all right did you get that in the earth who's in the earth now Holy Ghost so we can glory in this in this that we understand and know him I am the Lord well if people are saying that they don't worship the Holy Ghost then they don't know him understand and know him that he is the Lord they don't understand they don't understand and know him as God because if they knew him as God they would worship him so they're thinking something else about the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost said to me earlier they don't know me they don't know me if somebody is saying we don't worship the Holy Ghost they don't know him he is God they don't know him they know things about his anointing they think the anointing that they know is him but the anointing isn't him it's part of his gifts it's not him so if they don't know him as God therefore they don't worship him as God elders in many churches will say we don't worship the Holy Ghost elders mm -hmm. which means they've, they've come a long way right. in their doctrine but their doctrine won't let them go farther mm -hmm. thus far and no farther they're blocked mm -hmm. by that veil mm -hmm. we don't worship the Holy Ghost well of course not you don't know him as God or Lord why would you worship him they're thinking when I talk about the Holy Ghost I'm talking about an anointing or speaking in tongues or something like that and of course you don't worship an anointing you don't worship speaking in tongues you don't worship a gift of the Spirit but it's still just a gift of the Spirit you worship the Spirit who gave the gift you worship the God behind the anointing but the problem is most people think when I talk about the Holy Ghost that's the Holy Ghost that's all they're talking about the gift of the Spirit they don't know him as God all they do is know an anointing to one degree or another mm -hmm. you shouldn't worship an anointing that's a thing you worship God who is a person mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost who's in the earth he's the living God but if that's what your doctrine is or your belief is that the Holy Ghost is an anointing then you can only get so far and no further you can only go so far and no further you're not going behind the veil you're not going behind the velvet rope ever see one of those velvet ropes yes. where people can come in okay you can come in come on in and I'll take the rope away and go in and go in there right yes. put the rope back question them about something else oh eh, you can go in right if you don't worship the Holy Ghost as God you can't see him as God and you can't go there you can't go in what if I do it opens up to me are you here the, the veil is taken away I hope I'm getting this across I'm just gonna give you a little little backstory here I was brought up with you know some people in in the faith word of faith type people believed greatly in the word confessing the word believing the word and praying and believing that it would come to pass and we saw great results mm -hmm. consistent and great results I had a friend I just talked to recently still at the same place still having good results mm -hmm. sickness isn't bothering them still believing for finances those things are working well are you here yeah. other things that he's exercised his faith on according to the word comes to pass wonderful knows the anointing in different times he'll have an anointing to you know to give a word or word of wisdom word of knowledge something like that might even pray for people and experience the anointing mm -hmm. are you here mm -hmm. I know I've been in that circle I was in that circle I understand all of those things mm -hmm. 
and I know that world I've lived in it that's where I used to live and it doesn't mean I don't believe in the anointing or believe in the, the, the manifestation of the Word of God and the Word of faith you understand mm -hmm. I still believe those things but this is different mm -hmm. are you here yes. I hope you can hear that this is a whole different thing it's a whole different level it's something I did not do before mm -hmm. it's different it's better it's more scriptural all of those things fit together now I don't know how many people I hear online say this all makes sense now mm -hmm. but our elders our elders say that you shouldn't worship the Holy Ghost our elders say you should mm -hmm. <laughs> if you knew him as the Living God you would worship him maybe you're unsure well stick around here for a while look at some of the other videos I'll walk you through it trying to help you out tonight but maybe you're just unsure about it relax try it out use the words I worship you Holy Ghost give it a try try them on for size I know it's uncomfortable when anytime you step out into something new but these words listen these words I worship you Holy Ghost will literally pull back the curtain for you Amen. Yes. use of those words pulls that curtain back and you begin to experience and see the Living God the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. like you've never seen him before mm -hmm. I was given these words to use by someone who was on the other side of that curtain they knew how to get there so try it prove it first Thessalonians 521 says prove all things say prove all things, prove all things. you can prove it mm -hmm. prove all things and hold fast to that which is good mm -hmm. this is good in fact it's better than where I was before mm -hmm. if you thought there was any benefit to it you would do it mm -hmm. is there any benefit to it now the Lord is that spirit where the Spirit of the Lord is there say there there, there is Liberty so when that veils taken away there is a kind of Liberty and going from glory to glory that you can't get to without that revelation check this out I'm gonna walk you through something I recommend confessing scriptures did you know that mm -hmm. now if I'm confessing scriptures whose words am I confessing the Holy Ghost right he breathed them out now I'm breathing them out we're breathing together I recommend confessing scriptures from five minutes to 60 minutes it's usually about where I go you know I'd like to I'll usually do a scripture say a scripture, a scripture. one scripture I'll confess it I have several that I'll, I'll do but and I'll confess it for a minimum of five minutes I haven't done five minutes in a long time I usually do like 10 to 15 minutes up to 60 minutes depending on how what do you mean confessing a scripture for 60 minutes let me explain if I look up first Timothy 6 17 and it says the Living God gives me richly all things to enjoy mm -hmm. you've heard of that right the Living God gives me richly all things to it who's the Living God by the way the Holy, Ghost. Holy Ghost so the Living God Holy Ghost gives me richly all things to enjoy mm -hmm. what do I mean by confessing that for five to 60 minutes I will say the Living God gives me richly all things to enjoy and then I'll say the Living God gives me richly all things to enjoy I'll say Living God gives me richly all things to enjoy to enjoy all things Living God gives me richly are you here yes. and I will do that for five minutes and sometimes up to 60 minutes now if I do that I'm talking about the Living God the Holy Ghost giving me richly all things to enjoy what is that gonna do to my belief about who the Living God is the Holy Ghost it's gonna radically change the way I think about who the Holy Ghost is number one he's the Living God and he's a God who gives me who gives me richly all things to enjoy are you here so my view my perception of who the Living God the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today has completely changed through my saying the same thing that he said I recommend this and you can get a watch and watch it I have one of these watches where you can just put a little thing there and so when I start I know how 
how long I've been mm -hmm. I want to at least do five minutes say I want to at least, want to at least do, five do five minutes and I'm telling you after the end of five minutes and this is what how I end up at an hour sometimes is it'll I need to keep going in this there's more there mm -hmm. and you will be surprised as you meet him because he's almost nothing like you thought he was you'll be surprised to meet him when he starts looking out of that mirror at you he's awesome I wish I could get you to do it well then uh, was it yesterday two days ago two days ago he says this to me if you did nothing today because I'm, I'm gonna do all my stuff to do my scriptures and my confessions and all things I do right if you did nothing today but worship me you'd be all right now, I want to walk you through this I'm not I'm not just bringing you here for no reason you understand I believe in confessing the word I'm telling you I do this this is this is how I do if you did nothing today but worship me you'd be all right so you'd be all right, you'd be all right. can you hear that you'd be all right Acts 2 39 calls the Holy Ghost the promise so if I'm confessing a promise right I'm believing for it I'm believing for it but if I worship him he is the promise say he is the promise, he is the promise. he's all the promises yes and amen mm -hmm. I'm worshiping him you're worshiping the promises I'm worshiping him he is the promise mm -hmm. and as I was worshiping the hunt that's what I did I didn't do it all day I mean I did it throughout the day the times when I would be confessing a different scripture I just said okay I'm gonna leave that aside and I'm just gonna concentrate on worshiping the Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost mm -hmm. I worship you Holy Ghost I probably did it two three hours something like that throughout the day mm -hmm. say two three, hours two three hours throughout the day, throughout the day. well at some point during that time something happened on the inside of me and I knew that something took place in my situation around me and I just kind of chuckled on the inside and kept at it worshiping the Holy Ghost thanking him for whatever it was I didn't know what it was in my head I knew something that I had been believing for happened say something, something. he had been believing for, been believing for. Happened. happened and I wasn't confessing the scripture I was confessing my worship of the one who said the scripture who is the promise mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. so his glory took care of it mm -hmm. and then I found out about it later that certain things happened that I was very blessed by Amen. that did you see that was that was the point the connection is that I'm not I'm just not worshiping willy-nilly nothing I'm worshiping the one who said the promises mm -hmm. who is the promise who has the ability to do all of those things as I worship him he's able to do things for me that he couldn't do before as I worship him he exposes me to a glory and a liberty that I couldn't see or be exposed to before and changes me and my situation by worshiping him Luke chapter 4 verse 8 thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve thou shalt worship the Lord thy God mm -hmm. people that don't know the Holy Ghost is God can't worship the Lord their God mm -hmm. are you here yeah. this should literally be devastating to a lot of people that have not been worshiping the Lord their God who's God in the earth today his name is the Holy Ghost he is the living God they've been worshiping some worn out religious doctrine that will literally only take them so far but as you begin to worship the living God the true and living God whose name is the Holy Ghost he will be able to take you from glory to glory that you weren't allowed to go to before people wonder why I can't go here why I can't have that why I can't get it done why I can't believe for it you're not allowed to but as soon as you begin worshiping him the veil is taken away the velvet rope is pulled back and you're allowed into a space where all things can happen for you because they're happening from him greatness of glory supernatural change coming into your life 
thou shalt worship did who said this by the way it's in red letters Jesus said thou shalt worship me mm -hmm. and me only should you should you serve is that what he said yeah. thou shalt worship me Jesus and and me only shall you serve is that what he said no literally Jesus is saying this well if you don't know who the Lord your God is you're gonna be confused and you have no place to put all of these things that I've been saying you shall worship the Lord your God let me read this again word for word thou shalt say thou shalt, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve so we got thou shalt on one side and shalt thou on the other side thou shalt and shalt thou mm -hmm. it's a worship sandwich mm -hmm. you're in the middle of it you worship the Lord your God and you can serve the Lord your God you're in the sandwich are you here mm -hmm. this then becomes your life and purpose I am telling you please hear me this then becomes your life and purpose not to die and go to heaven but to worship and serve the living and true God whose temple you are worshiping the Lord fearing the Lord and working righteousness in the earth and if you do this you'll begin to see that using the words I worship you Holy Ghost and worshiping him becomes your source of increase far beyond what you could do before say recognize, recognize. worshiping, worshiping. The, Holy the Holy Ghost as my source, as my source. Of, increase. of increase who has the ability to increase you greater than the Holy Ghost no one you come to know him let them understand and know me mm -hmm. right you come to know him and you go from glory to glory even by the Lord who is that spirit let me pray for you Holy Ghost I thank you that your blessing is on these people right now and that their ears are open that they may know you and walk in the fullness of revelation that you have for them in this day and as they continue on says the Spirit of the Lord great grace shall come upon you and scriptures will open up and you'll begin to understand and see things and know the living God in ways you've never known him before for this is my day says the Spirit of the Lord this is my day to shine and you shall shine as I shine in Jesus name amen, amen. If you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me Holy Ghost I worship you you are the living God and you are well able to supernaturally increase and multiply all of my financial affairs money and things I give you all the glory I thank you for it in the Jesus is name in heaven, amen Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost your God in the earth today.